I'm Kathleen Choi, a Korean chef now living in the U.S. My passion is creating healthy and delicious foods using some of my favorite Korean ingredients. Join me in learning about Korean foods, ingredients, and culture. Next on Kathleen's Korean Kitchen. Today, I'll be making some of the most traditional foods prepared and eaten during special occasions in Korea. Three colored john, Korean pancakes made with fish, beef, and vegetables. And one of the most iconic desserts eaten during major holidays in Korea, songpyeon, steamed over a bed of aromatic pine needles. Later, delicious dokgalbi burger made with minced short ribs seasoned with sweet and savory bulgogi sauce and a popular and healthy Korean dessert punch called sujonggwa made with persimmons, dried dates, ginger, and cinnamon. Every country has its own unique tradition and culture with specific traditional foods made and consumed during the major holidays. Foods and holidays always go hand in hand, no matter what country you live in. In today's episode, I'd like to share with you some of the most popular and iconic foods that are prepared during the major holidays in Korea and explore the significance behind these special occasions. For thousands of years, Koreans prepared different types of foods during holiday and special occasions using fresh fruits and crops grown and harvested at different seasons throughout the year. Foods for special occasions include festive foods that were enjoyed on holidays in particular months and seasonal dishes prepared with foods produced in the current season. Days with odd-numbered dates Fallen in the same numbered month were considered festive days. Hundreds of years ago, when the infant mortality was high, Koreans used to celebrate the baby's 100th day called Baegil. According to some records in Korean history, Koreans began making rice cakes in the 6th century. Baekseolgi is also served at Tol, which marks the child's first birthday. The custom of serving rice cake on New Year's Day has existed since the Shilla Kingdom, which began in 57 BC. The shape of the sliced white rice omelets used for making tteokguk on New Year's Day resembles the size and shape of a silkworm, which symbolizes good luck. Today, Songpyeon has become a popular symbol representing Korean tradition and culture. Songpyeon is traditional rice cake that's usually eaten during the Harvest Moon Festival called Chuseok, which falls on the 15th day of August in the lunar calendar. So today I'm going to make three colored john, red, green, and yellow, using ground beef, zucchini, and the fish. This is Korean hobak, but of course you can use the regular zucchini. Just cut the end off, and I'm going to slice him up in about an eighth of an inch thickness, very thinly. First, I'm going to slice it in half. And these bell peppers are going to act as a vessel to stuff the seasoned beef. Just get the seeds out. And I'm going to quarterize it, just like that. What I have here is two pieces of defrosted Pollock fish which is commonly used to make chan. Go against the grain. There you go. It's fall coming apart easily. Just cut the ends off. I have about half a pound of fresh, very lean, low-fat ground beef. And in a bowl, combine this beef and four ounces of extra firm tofu. Break it up with your hands like this. It's a lot easier. And to this, I'll add the chopped onions and some low sodium soy sauce. Half a tablespoon of sesame oil. Sugar, about a teaspoon. 
and then some black pepper, a half a teaspoon, a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic. To the mixture, I'm just gonna add about two tablespoons of corn flour so that it'll bind all the mixture together better. The Korean chon is about lightly pan frying, not deep frying, so we're not gonna use too much oil. Just drizzling extra virgin olive oil. So let's start with the most lightly colored chon. Again, I have some corn flour and then some egg wash in which I've mixed a little bit of salt for a little bit of flavor. Just dip the hobak zucchini on both sides and then we will dip in the egg wash. See, I can see it getting a little brown. I'll just move this over. It's very lightly pan fried, so it's not gonna drip with oil. Drizzle some more oil, and let's fry the fish chunk. The fish chunks all cooked. So move them over, they're nice and golden. Since they're just slightly pan fried, it's not gonna be very crispy on the outside. Take some beef patty, just gently press into this bell pepper, kind of flatten it out. Okay, as for the remaining beef patties, I'm going to make it into mini burgers. So just take a little piece like this and roll it. And you have a little beef chon. So make a few more of those. Pet it with some corn flour, very lightly. Cover it with the lid and let it cook indirectly for about a couple minutes. The beef chon is done. I'm boiling some water here for my next recipe to make Songpyeon rice cakes. And on this pot, I have some beautiful purplish red cabbage leaves, uh, which I'm boiling to get a little bit of a food coloring. I'm filling it with three different kinds of ingredients. The first one with a quarter cup of roasted sesame seeds with a pinch of salt. The second filling is cooked with sweet red beans. So just combine a cup of pre-soaked red azuki beans with three cups of water in one to three ratio, and then boil the beans in a pot until they get soft and tender. And then in the end, add a tablespoon of sugar. I have a cup of pre-cooked mung beans. It's pretty easy to make. All you need is a pot to cook the mung beans with a cup of water, a pinch of salt, and a teaspoon of sugar. And simmer it in low heat for about 30 minutes. Beautiful. It's purplish blue, as you can see. I'm going to mix it with the cranberry juice to get a really pretty pink color. Now the hardest part is actually in making the rice dough. I have three bowls here. Each has about a cup of sweet rice powder. So in the first bowl, I'll add a pinch of salt. And then to this, mix in the first food coloring. Good three, four minutes of kneading and then work on the second one, which would be the green colored 
Tong Pyeon. Again, a pinch of salt. Soup powder. Give it a good mix. And then the water, like I said, it has to be really hot. Add a little bit at a time. So once again, it's important to use the right amount of water and the temperature of the water is super important. It has to be boiling hot. I'll start with the white colored one first. So you break off a little small piece of rice dough about an inch thick and roll it between your palms into a ball. And then press your thumb in the center of the ball to make room for the filling. The mung beans are soft and it's like a paste. And then you cover it like this, seal at the edges like this, using your thumb and index finger. This time I'll use the sesame filling. Because the rice cakes will get sticky, I've already put a damp cloth at the bottom of the steamer. This is a very traditional way of making songpyeon. Leave a little bit of space in between. Let's see what our liquid chef Woody is going to create for us today using one of the key ingredients, persimmons. Okay, I'm telling you, persimmon is not one of those fruits that I eat every day. And uh, I've just been seeing uh, this dried fruit, this dried persimmon here. And that's sort of a dried one there. And you can imagine it being a much more full looking fruit when it's in, in season. But they call it gum, gum, get that. Okay, so I'm gonna make something for winter. It's cold, it's cold outside, you wanna be warm, a bit like an eggnog. And the way to do that is essentially get some cinnamon, all right? Get some cloves, pop it into a kitchen towel like this, wrap it up, and then crush it, okay? And then, essentially, those crushed spices are what we're gonna add to a very hot pan and dry roast them, which I have over here. So, you can see that smoking away just like that, okay? To that, we need to add a little bit of my favorite Korean spirit, a little bit of soju. Woo! Well, that's going to get you feeling all nice and warm, just like that, okay? So that, with a little bit of sugar in it, put it back on the stove, and essentially, you're going to need to add to that now the persimmon. And because pine nuts actually roast at a lot faster than cinnamon and cloves, because they aren't dried, you need to add these at this stage. So that goes back on the stove with some sugar to heat up and let it basically infuse for about another 15 minutes. Then you need to make an egg base. It's pretty simple, all right? Take four egg yolks, pop it into the uh, saucepan, equal amounts cream and milk, and then a cup of sugar. Whisk it through, and you'll make an eggnog base, which is pretty traditional for most American families. Okay, but once you've taken that thing off over there, the big flavor pot, you will end up with something that looks like this and it's got all the color of the cinnamon and the persimmon in there, and the cloves are just bursting with flavor. And to this, we need to add the flavor. Push it through, like so. Now, I prefer this as a cold beverage. Some people like it warm, particularly when it's cold outside. If it's snowing, hey, go for a warm. But today, we're gonna try this as a cold beverage. Think of it like, the warmness of the drink is warming your heart and not necessarily the contents, but uh, nevertheless, this is what it looks like and I call this Gam Korean Spiced Liqueur. I'm going to serve it with a little bit of persimmon on the side, so like this, like that, and that would be an ideal way to spend a cold winter night anywhere in the world. I like it, I'm gonna try it now, a bit of this. <laughs> And you can taste the fruitiness of that persimmon coming through there. It's just delicious. 
Thank you for giving me the challenge, Kathleen. That's one of my favorites. I love it. Wow, your persimmon eggnog sounds like a perfect drink to have in front of a warm fire during the cold winter months we have in Korea. Nice job, Woody. My next recipe is called Dog Galbi Burger, inspired from the all-American food hamburger. Instead of using ground beef, the patty is traditionally made with minced short ribs, which is traditional for dog galbi. The key is in the sweet and savory kalbi sauce, which is basically soy sauce, sesame oil, some cooking wine, minced garlic and ginger, and some honey. Let's start mincing the short ribs. Dice up the meat. We'll take probably about a good three, four minutes. And the word dog galbi literally means rice cake and kalbi. So once we make the patty and grill it in the skillet, I'm going to add some rice balls in between. So we'll move it into a bowl. Now let's start mixing in the ingredients, starting with some garlic, about half a tablespoon, and some minced ginger. Ginger is always great for meats. A teaspoon. Low sodium soy sauce, three heaping tablespoons. And to this, here's a heaping tablespoon of sesame oil. And a little bit of black pepper. And for the sweetness, I'm using the rice syrup two tablespoons. Mm, it's very fragrant, you know? The mixture of the sesame and the garlic, ginger, and soy. Wow, this is the best marinade for your beef. I'll need a little bit of a corn flour. Okay, time to make the patties. I think we have enough for about three servings. Should be a good quarter pounder. I'm going to get started on our holiday punch called sujonggwa. It's pretty easy to make. I have some persimmons, dried dates, a piece of peeled ginger, and some cinnamon cloves. So all I'm doing is adding all these ingredients in a boiling pot of water. We'll let it simmer in medium-low heat for about 45 minutes, and in the end, we'll have to cool it off and add either honey or brown sugar before you serve. This is a very traditional Korean punch that we serve during the holidays, and also they're served in restaurants as desserts after you had finished your meal. It's not only nutritious, but very tasty, and all the kids love it. And it's a better alternative to sodas. I'm going to check on the rice cakes now. Mm, the aroma from this pine needles, very, very fragrant. I think we'll let it boil for about 10 more minutes. I believe the songpyeon's ready. I'll just grab these four corners of the cloth and then go to the sink because we'll need to rinse in cold water with a little bit of sesame oil to get the gloss. The skillet's heating up. You can hear a nice good sizzle. So before I flip over the patty, I'm going to add some rice balls in between the burger patty. Give it a gentle press, and then I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, in the meantime, I have here iceberg lettuce, which I'm going to add in the burger, and beautiful sesame leaves. They will add a great herbal flavor to the burger. I have a beautiful, juicy, tomato here. I'm going to slice up. I 
I'm really excited about my Songpyeon because not only did the colors come out beautifully, but I can't wait to taste it. Mm, I picked the one with the mung bean filling inside. So it has a slightly chewy texture, but a good balance of flavors from the rice dough and from the mildly sweet filling. So a couple of pieces of this rice cake after my delicious Dok Galbi burger works for me. And here's my cinnamon punch. Mm, came out beautifully. All I added was some brown sugar in the end. You can also add some honey if you like. Now it's time to see what Dr. Dia has to say about the health and nutritional benefits of today's ingredients. Persimmons and dates highlighted on today's show are delicious and healing. Persimmons are hydrating and soothing and are excellent for those suffering from summer dehydration. The fresh peel can be applied to the skin to lighten and brighten the complexion. The stems and leaves can even stop hiccups. Dates are also very versatile and can strengthen digestion, build the blood, calm the nerves, and even helps protect the liver against toxins and fight certain kinds of cancers. Now that's a date that won't stand you up. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Remember, life is delicious, so taste it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.